essential. Like this is peaceful. Like this view is is priceless. Like I would use this for to clear my mind. Like, I come here like before I'm finna make like my big decisions or something like that. Like I've always wanted like just a peace a peaceful spot. Like I, I had it in Memphis. I, I don't know where I could just go. Like I could go downtown, I guess. But I feel like that's because I'm in Hollywood, I guess. Yeah, Hollywood right over there. Right. But no, like this is with everything going on, like this is just what I needed to see. It just like motivated me even more. Like made the vision even more clear. It's attainable now. Why are we the only ones still in this condition? We ain't been able to get out. But if you notice, when you go to school, they don't teach you your history. You learn their history. And if they give you anything black history, they might give you a small part of Martin Luther King. Because they wanted to use Martin Luther King as a tool for them, because he was saying nonviolent. But they don't tell you the full range of Dr. Martin Luther King. The man was very deep, and many white folks turned against him because he was changing his direction. Listen to King from 63 to 68. The King that gave that speech at, on the March on Washington 63 was not the same man that got killed in Memphis in 68. If you listen to what he starts saying in 68, he was talking about boycotting the economic system in America. He stopped using the language Negro. He starts saying, I'm black and I'm proud. He starts saying all of this because he starts saying that wasn't the way to go. He met with Elijah Muhammad in Chicago. And he found out that in, when he was in Chicago, it was more racist in Chicago than it was in Alabama. See, so when you think of racism, many of us get this notion that it's just the South. Right here in Compton, when I was a baby in 19, I would say about 1968, 69, this was all white. Black people couldn't come over here in Compton. This right here. If you was caught over here, you would be hung over here. They had a group called the Spook Hunters. Yeah, in Compton, Spook Hunters. And you bet not be caught over here. This is what white folks did. When my family moved over here, most of blacks migrated out of Watts into Compton. Compton was like the leg up because these, this wasn't here at the time. But all these homes over here, this was all homes that was all white people. Our neighbors were still white when I was there. White people didn't move out of here until about 1974, 75, then the blacks migrated in. Back here behind the park, they had Southern California Edison Gas Company. This was a major employer. The white folks would work, they walked to work, walked home, you know, like some shit you see on TV. In Compton, you gotta remember, Compton is the hub of everything. This is why it's prime real estate. Because you can go from Compton to Disneyland in 15 years. You can go from Compton to the Valley in 20 minutes, depending on the traffic, 30 minutes. You can go from Compton to downtown LA in no time. You can go from Compton to anywhere. It's the hub. It's, the it's right in center. That's why one of the nicknames for Compton is the hub city. That's what it's called. And so this was all white. The blacks migrated over here. The whites moved out. And so what we say, and one of the things we talk about in the nation, if you wanted to integrate with us, when we moved over here, why did you move out? Why did you stay? Why did you go to At one time, even in Watts was white. In 1930, the Ku Klux Klan burnt a cross on the 103rd Grade Street. And if we went over there today, that's by the Jordan Down Project. You couldn't fathom that today. But it happened. So all these areas, black folks moved from the South. That's why all of our roots are the South. Mine is, my father's side is Texas, my mother's side is Louisiana. All of us came from the South looking for a better life. Many went into Chicago. So if you was from Mississippi, you moved in through Memphis, right. into Chicago, right. or Detroit, right. or America. Right. But your roots is right. You look at Isaiah Thomas, he grew up in Chicago, but his family's from Vicksburg, Mississippi. Nice. That's what I've been yeah. sharing with your brothers is in this gym right here, this park, I done seen so many pros. And I was telling him, I watched Louis Nelson, who was a mentor of mine, Larry Hollifield. I watched Lorenzo Roma. Down here, coach, when he was playing, when he got drafted by the Golden State Warriors, this is the gym he came to, to work out, to play every day. I watched DeMar DeRozan and them in his era come up. So I didn't see 
lines of people come out of here. I remember when Reggie Theus would come to the gym mm -hmm. right here and play. Mm -hmm. Shahid would break. Right. And they would come right here. They'd park that Rolls Royce right there right, in front of right, the thing right. and walk in the gym and come play. Mm -hmm. So these are the people that came through here. I can name names. Jose Slaughter also played, had a stint in the NBA, come out of Compton. Tayshawn Prince. When you say came through here, where, where is he? Where's, where's this is Lutus Park. Lutus Park. Lutus Park in Compton, California. One of the roughest, honestly, roughest areas as far as games. All that yeah, too. But this is like a safe haven. They, don't, they might do some shooting, killing all around, but this little area right here, look around. I mean, you can pan it. You don't see no bearing riding, no nothing. This is a safe haven right we here. We walk out there, then you'll see yeah, some Yeah, you'll see some stuff, but right here, park, everybody right knew, here. don't nothing go down up in here. Exactly. Carfino went to Iowa. and he had a brother, him. didn't he? Yeah, Don Carfino yeah. went to a SC. SC. Absolutely. And Absolutely. It, Lorenzo Romar beat Don Carfino out to make the Golden State gotcha. Warriors. Okay. But they all was come from right here. Okay. okay. <laughs> they used to play in the league right here. Okay. So cool. these are things. Uh, my boy Jeremiah Adams went to Oregon. No, no, Jeremiah. Jeremiah lived right around the corner. And I never, would, I never forget when he missed that layup. Boy, he was <laughs> in ninth grade, missed the layup. Everybody was bad. <laughs> On, but at some point, you got to focus on something. Yeah, right. You got to take a minute and say, look, I got to get this done. And, that, and that's where Spot Up came from. You know, yes, you got the, it's got the term of basketball, but it's really about what you do every day. I mean, it's bigger than the game. It's big, way bigger than the way game. Bigger. You know, and Nike got they just do it. My little slogan is show your range. And yeah, you can show your range on the court, but what else can you do in life? Right. Can you show your range? Can you be a good kid? Can you get, be a good father? Can you be a good businessman? Can you be a good just person? So it's like, show your range, and so I'm tagging everybody and everything. Cause that's life is about, this, this sport gave me a whole lot of stuff. Right, and it did the same thing for me. That's why, like, I tell a lot of people, it's bigger than, it's bigger than rap, it's bigger than the game. You know, I had a mentor um, named Marcus Brown who told me, like, I like what you're doing, kid. Keep writing your story. And at the time, I ain't understand what it meant. But now at 25, looking at that 20-year-old kid, it's like, oh, okay, I've been through a couple of things. I can tell this story like going back to Arkansas State. I was a career coach for a coach. So it was like, now I'm related to these kids. It's like, I'm seeing you going through the same, same mental laps that I went through. And that was like, I like, can tell you a story about me and how you're going to get through this and how it's going to make you stronger five years down the line, two years. Like, don't dwell right here because tomorrow going to come and the next day going to come and just try to get through the whole day. So that's my biggest thing is just trying to get back to the youth that way. You know, I can't reach them all, but if no, I reach one, I did You can't even go, you'll die trying to reach all of them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got to reach the ones that want to be reached, too. And there's some exactly. that don't even know they want to be reached, and you still got to give them a shot. Yeah. You know, but all you can do is put it out there. You know, that's all, you know, that's what people did with us. Just put it out there. We, I kind of learned that, I kind of learned that in Montana. Mm -hmm. Like, those people in Montana, they were, like, really accepting me. And it's, like, coming from a, a rural area, it's, like, where everybody's kind of, like, crabs in the bucket. There, you were more, like, um, who is this guy? I'm interested in right, this person. Right. And I look up to you like yeah. when a kid came out of the restroom and he knew my name and I didn't know the kid and I was like, How do you know me? Right. Like, are you serious? I look up to you. I'm like, if you only knew what was going on last night. You know, yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> like you wouldn't even right. you know, you say, I'll so, be right back, y'all. But, but that just goes to show you never know who watching. Yeah. So it's always you gotta keep keep everything in a positive light and just keep pitching forward. That's right. Yeah, this is the park where so many great players came out of basketball in the, in the Compton and South Central area. As you can see, his name after DeMar DeRozan. He was out of Compton, but even before him, you had Tayshawn Prince played in his gym. You had a guy named Louis Nelson who played for Compton High. He played with the New Orleans Jazz and the Washington Bullets, Louis Nelson. Still live in the city. Uh, he also played in here, Larry Hollifield, who went to UCLA. This is back when John Wood was coaching. All of them came out of the city of Compton, out of Compton High School. So this is a rich play. Louis Nelson was my coach in college. And the mentor, he also taught at Jordan High School. But he played here also. So all of them used to play here. When I was little, I used to come back to Louis Nelson was on the high team. He won 62 games in a row. They didn't lose. And off that team, Nelson played at the University of Washington. Larry Hollifield played at UCLA. Mike Hoffman played at Arizona. They all came from college. All day long. See, that's positive. Uh, you know, a lot of them, I, I, I admire certain rappers. I do like Snoop Dogg to a degree. I don't like all what he's rapping about, but I do know some things about him. He's dead a lot back to his community. Always has. He always went back there to lift up some of the other young rappers. He would go back and get
give back money or whatever. Yeah, they don't talk about that. But he's done a lot to try to help the babies. I know, I know this for a fact. I know this for a fact. So you got other rappers that do that. You know, they really want, they care, and they try. But now we have to really uh, be able to unite and change the direction of our rap. That music and that culture, that's why the minister has met with every rapper on his album. The minister just did an album, Minister Farrakhan. On his album, he got Snoop on it. He got Rick Ross on it. He got Tina Marie on it. He got Stevie Wonder on it. He had, I mean, uh, Stephanie Mills on it. All these different genres is on his thing. The minister's a classical violinist. <laughs> he done played Beethoven concertos. Mendelssohn concerto. This is what he played. Classical violinist. See? Well, they don't tell that part. No, they don't tell that. They That's don't what tell he that. was before he got in the nation. He was a Calypso singer. His mother's from St. Kitts, his daddy's from Jamaica. He sung Calypso, and that's what he used to sing. So when he got in the nation, he gave it up. Malcolm X got the order from Elijah, like, either you're gonna sing or you're gonna be in the nation. And Malcolm told all the, because there was a lot of artists in the nation, he told them all, some, a lot of them left, he stayed, he gave up. He was making good music, money, he was doing music. He gave it up. Sons, How you doing, man? How He's you into doing the this music week? business okay. out of Memphis and his right. partner Arkansas. He played, right. he played, I've been well, doing man, since hey. he was a young man. Hey, this yeah. who taught me everything about this right here. First person that ever took me to work out, took me to shoot a basketball, right. used to come get me at late at night, come like 10, 15 miles and take me to work out every night. Yeah, he played I was with like, my pops, man. man. He, he showed me everything I know athlete. about this game, man. Yeah. This man right here is man. So the blessing, man. I'm good to see you, yeah, man. man. I love I'm you, man. Sure. I love you too, I love you too man. man. God love you. Yeah. They from yeah. out of town. Just it's a legend, man. He, he real humble, but this is a real <laughs> legend right here, man. Believe that, man. I love you. All right, All right. All right. All right. This is the Muhammad Mosque right here. You see this across the street? This used to be a motel. It was called the Hub Motel. And what, you know, you had, a, you had a big problem with prostitution, you know, right here on this street. People come from everywhere, prostitutes right here. This the play. Everywhere. And so one day. And this just used to be like the strip where all the pimps would just come right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still yeah. there. There's something to do. But when we got, we got over here, we started, like, hell, we ain't doing it here. Especially not between these blocks here. We ain't doing it. So what happened was, a few years ago, <clears throat> Uh, Pimp was whooping, was beating a girl under his sister's son. By the time he came, it was already, they had already left. But that day, that Sunday, after I meet, we went over there, called the owner of that hotel. The owner was from India. From the continent of India, they set up motels on Long Beach, all up and down here, on Figueroa, that's another street known for prostitution out here, and they set up shop. Now this hotel, motel, they were bringing in like 10 G's a month. So they was basically okay. setting up little broths. We went there and shut it down. All the buck we got to the doors, locked off that entranceway, called the owner out, come out. He wasn't there that day. His wife was there. There's some other dude coming. Now they would tell him to come out. You're not going to be pimping no black women. You're not going to be going. Well, we got everybody involved. NAACP from Compton, the law people. But at first, they were tripping. He shut that shit down. He had everybody in the middle. He didn't shut these streets down. He didn't ran them off the court. That's how I got the money going. All happened behind me. Two years ago, we had a summer day camp I was running. My daughter and I was running a summer day camp. I was gone to get a war. We got the last part, so I'm having a little banquet for the children. And they were down here at the time at the bookstore. They were eating lunch or something. And one of the brothers saw the dude trying to run a prostitute over right across the street. At so he intervened. Hey, brother, you know, don't do that. Don't do this. You know, the dude was like, you know, like, you know, like, fuck that. You know what you're talking about? Hey, that brother, don't do it. We got one of children over here. Don't do it like that. <clears throat> Just so happened, one of our brothers knew the dude because. One of my brothers, he's an ex OG from the neighborhood to do this. And we get into it, you know, and by this time they didn't call me. I came and I called the other brothers, everybody came. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It was a liquor store over here. This is where it all go down at this liquor store. They closed the liquor store. We go up there and see the dude up there, and he gets spooked. Now we just trying to talk up, man. We ain't trying to get in the building, but just don't do that right here, brother. You know, we don't do that. 
So he started getting, you know, oh, man, you know, we can go to the hood and do this. Okay, no problem. We go over to that neighborhood. But when we get there, they got guns out. And so we talking to him. They didn't start shooting. The dude that didn't, he didn't start shooting after we left. And then he started shooting. Back, back, back. But the whole thing was about that. Now, since then, though, him, we haven't seen him since at all. This is because he already knew, man, you shot at who the missing? You fucked up. And especially they know the brothers we got in here, but they also know even if you go to jail, you fucked up. You don't do that. You deep in prison, too. <laughs> Let's walk down here. I'm going to show you. I don't know if you heard of Blood Souls Barbecue. It was on the guy show. You ever seen that guy yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the barbecue spot. Like you know man no, not man, but the guy, Brian, Diner, Brian. Okay, Diner. yeah, yeah. Well, Blood Soul Barbecue used to be right here. We should talk to him. He's no longer here no more. But then somebody just opened this up. But the line would be from here, damn near to the corner to get that barbecue. Nice old bit. White, white folk is coming. I don't even count to the neighbor. Well, the Memphis spot is JD's. Okay. He was from Texas. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, he moved back to Texas, oh, too. But, but, but he grew up in Compton, but this okay. is, this was his spot. But, you know, we used to, this was a, a popular business. A brother just reopened it. So yeah. they just now reopened and trying to get it back. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, this is just a new spot. It used to be uh, the best of we moved back to Texas. It was crack cocaine. That's what brought the prostitutes here originally. It was the crack. And now they've just become an open market now for prostitutes, pimp, the street. Everybody know Long Beach Boulevard, they call this, this is the blade right here. And I'm shot. Ain't nobody out here today. Usually they be out here. It's a measure of respect, because we always, you'll see us out tomorrow, we'll be out here tomorrow. So, uh, but this is, this is the street, man. We right in the hood of uh, where our people is, with drugs, gangs, all this stuff is right around here. Now, we left Luda's Park, where the Paroos, over here is the Crips. Southside Crip over here. We got Kelly Park, where Easy E them from, they back over there. MC Ren was from Southside, he over there with you. Now, MC Ren, I do know him too. He was also in the mosque in Calvary. Back then, we were down the street. But Ren was in the mosque, under the window. And um, a couple of the rappers were. Cam, I know Cam, so he moved to Phoenix. But Cam also was right here in the Compton mosque. So <coughs> we had quite a few of rappers that came out. But uh, this is the spot right here, brother. I remember this used to be, that Domino's used to be Taco Bell. My first time ever going to jail was at that Taco Bell. I'd never forget that. Right there. I had just got back from the basketball camp in Maryland. So, you know, I'm kicking it. I got to go to Vegas the next week for the big AAU tournament. So, we live by Lewis Park. And my friend, they wanted to come to Taco Bell. My brother. We come out here. Everybody used to hang out here on Sunday nights. Everybody hanging out here. But this particular night, I don't know what happened. But when we get here... You know, we ordered the food. And next to the police, asked me, my cousin, my friend, how old are you? Now, about a week before, I didn't argue with my father about, you know, man, it ain't no curfew. You can go out and get arrested for curfew right there. We have a, a black woman mayor here. Young sister, her name is Asia Brown. She's the mayor of Congress. A young woman. Uh, but you, you know, we got a lot of people that came from here uh, through these city halls. In fact, my aunt retired from City Hall. I had an aunt that retired from her. City of Compton. You see this off the freeway. If you get on that 105 freeway and head east, you'll see this.
that's why we got to give our young people direction early. Don't let them wait. <clears throat> Again, uh, my name is Vander Myers. Uh, I also go by Van Muhammad. I'll get into that later. But Van Myers is my name. I grew up in County, California. My father was Jackie Myers. My mother was Beverly Myers. My mother's side of the family came from Louisiana. They migrated into California in the 1940s, 50s. They started in Berkeley, California and moved down into LA, <clears throat> into the Nickerson Garden Projects, later into Compton. My father's side of the family is from Texas, from Austin, Texas, between Austin and Houston. And they migrated into Los Angeles in the 1940s. They moved into Watts. And then later on, we moved into Compton. I was born and raised in Compton, California. Uh, although I had a strong connection to the community known as Watts. That's where my father's from, my uncles and family members are from. I went to school, uh, elementary in Compton, Foster Elementary. I went to Willowbrook Junior High School, and then I went to high school, I went to two high schools. I went to St. John Bosco first, then I went to Jordan High in Watts. So I had a chance to see two, two worlds <coughs> going to Bosco. I went to Bosco primarily for basketball. I was a basketball player. The coach and my father was good friends, so I went there. That Bosco now is a powerhouse school now. Football, I think they rank number one in the country in football now. But when I went there, you know, back then when I went there, there was no black people. There was only 15 blacks in the whole school. So I got a chance to see how that felt, and that didn't feel good. Uh, but I graduated from Jordan High School in Watts. That's where my father graduated from in 1964. And my uncle, his brother was there in 1948. My uncle was on the Jordan City and State Championship track team in 1948. Uh, come from a family of good athletes. Uh, had a big family. Uh, just me, my brother, and sister only had two siblings, but my uncle, my father's brother, had 12 children. So it was a lot of them. Uh, I grew up in the city playing sports, playing basketball, football, baseball, and that was big for me because it kept me out of trouble. It kept me healthy on a health conscious tip, and also I just got a chance to connect with other people. I traveled a lot of places to play sports and got a chance to experience a lot of things, and I originally went to college on a scholarship. When I graduated from Jordan, I got a scholarship to Cal State I left. I uh, was there for a year. I left uh, because they changed coaches, so I went to El Camino College, and then from there, I went to Stanislaus State. During that time is when I started having children. <coughs> so that's what kept me having children. Actually, I had an offer to go to St. Mary's University, which was Division One. At that time, at El Camino, I was going to go to St. Mary's, but I had Shamana was recruiting me, the University of Baylor was recruiting me. University of San Francisco was recruiting me. I had quite a few schools looking at me, but I ended up sitting a year out and working. This is when, at this time, I think by the time I was 20, I had three children by the time I was 20. So I have an older son who's now 31, and then I had another son, 29, and I got LV, who you know, 29, two months apart. So I started having a family. I got married back in 1989. Still married, been married for 29 years. Me and LV and mom still together. And now I have, I have six children and eight grandchildren. So I'm uh, definitely honored about that. But I went on to Stanislaus State in Northern California. They're Division II, they're in the league with Cal State LA. Graduated from there. I stopped playing basketball, but I graduated from there back in 1995. So tell us about your occupation and the impact it placed upon the city of Compton. Okay. Well, I'm a teacher. Uh, I've been teaching for 19 years now at Jordan High School, which is in the Watt section of California. Uh, I've been the head basketball coach there for many years, and I've also coached travel ball as well. So. In Compton, a lot of the kids I worked with came from the basketball experience, coaching the travel ball. Uh, and I even had some kids from Compton that went to Jordan High School and played for me, basketball, many of them. Uh, the impact that it had <coughs> on many of the people in the community was that many of the young men I worked with didn't have a father. What happened is I became that father figure for them. 
And so just by being there, spending time with him, doing things that a father would do. So as they say, it takes a village to raise a child. That was my motto. And that was really came from my father because that's the type of man he was. But in my journey, in my time serving the community, that was a big part through basketball. I've been able to serve as a father figure, a role model, an uncle, a big brother for young men, and particularly young black men who didn't have a father. I have a young man by the name of Chris Johnson, and you, you may know Chris, he was at Northern. He was the guard that came before Levine came, the shooting guard. He was an All-American also at Northern. Uh, he played for me, and this was a young man that lived in the Jordan Mail Projects, didn't know, you know, his father had no dealing with him at all. He lived between his aunt houses because his mother really didn't have a place to live. But to this day, he still referred to me as his pops. Uh, because from there, from a gang-infested community, he never got caught up in it. He originally went to UC Riverside on a scholarship, and then he finished up playing at Northern Montana. And right now, he's very productive. I had another young man uh, that was, at one time, he was considered mentally retarded comes to Jordan High. He was from Compton, too. And he was appeared to be a little slow, but he came to Jordan. He went from having all Fs in school to getting a 3.0 grade point average. No one thought he could do it. He wasn't even going to graduate high school because they looking at him. He's mentally retarded, put him in special ed, and he was motivated to do things. So most of the players that I've had that I've coached, and not only the players, just the community in general, they recognized what I was trying to do. And the main thing that helped me do that was just being sincere. Uh, and number one, keeping God first and being sincere. You know, I don't do nothing for money. I don't do nothing with any hidden agenda or hidden motives. It's purely out of seeing other people and young people and our people in particular make it in this society. So what would you say the leeway or staying out of trouble in a Compton Watts area would be for you? Uh, the thing that kept me out of trouble was, first of all, was my family background. You know, I was blessed. Unlike many young black men, my father was there. Very present in my life. Um, <clears throat> I saw my father <clears throat> there all the time. He was the example. Uh, my mother was also there, very strong. My mother was more on a spiritual basis. She was the one who took me to church, although I'm not in the church per se, but that spirituality and that ruling the church has helped me and guided me to this day. Uh, my father was the other side. You know, he was the one that taught me what it was to be a man, what it was to serve the community. So those two things right there was the first thing that kept me away from getting in any trouble. <clears throat> and also I know if I did do anything wrong, mom and pops, in them days we got whoopings. I already knew. My mother didn't even talk no psychology in no time out. They knew slapology, stickology, boomology. Right, right, right. They worked them out. Just. So <clears throat> I understood that. Number two was being involved in sports. They kept me involved in certain programs by me being so involved. I played all sports, but basketball was the one I took the liking to. By me being involved in that, number one, it gave me discipline. It gave me focus. It gave me direction. It connected me with another peer group of people that was trying to go to college. So now that I knew if I wanted to go to college and play college ball, I gotta have a certain grade point average. I gotta pass an SAT test. So in doing that, that kept me focused on something positive as opposed to something negative. It also allowed me to meet people from all over and allowed me to travel and see different things. So I was exposed to a lot of different positive things that a lot of young people ordinarily may not be exposed to. So I would say those things are the strongest. I had a strong extended family. Uh, cousins of mine and uncles of mine that was always supportive. I also had a, a network of people in the community. I had good, strong coaches in my life um, that was always there, that was always supportive. So my coaches, all of them played a big role. So those were the major things that kept me out of trouble growing up. You know, like all children, we did little things, mischievous things, but I never would go across that line because as the Bible teaches, train a child up in the way he should go. And the key word is when he gets older, he'll never depart. So by you being trained up in the way you should go, no matter what you do, you always know how to stay on the right course. Today was a great day.
to ex we got to explore content uh, through the eyes of somebody who's been living here pretty much their whole life and got a lot of experience, a lot of history you know, throughout the community. Um, it's a blessing that we also have the same person as a part of the nation, nation, nation. Uh, it's, a, it's a great, great, great vision, great group of individuals who stand for something and stand on what they mean. Uh, great world, great black world. And I just want to thank you for being a part, uh, being a part of this doc the documentary. Um, our incorporation, our incorporation stands for I eat you eat, and it stands for you. And I think that um, the nation, what you guys stand for, uh, I think I would, I would love for you guys to be a part of, a part of that. Um, whether it's back in the middle, whether it's keeping me educated on everything that's going on in the way. So the insight. Um, in, a few, in a few of my songs, I kind of like, it's a big, it's a bold statement, but I kind of say I'm a new era mathematics. So it's kind of, it's how I visualize myself as I continue to experience life in the world. I can't thank you enough for, for, for actually being a part of it. Um, just, just coming along the ride. Um, this is actually my, one of my mentors, dad. So, um, Devon Myers, shout out to Devon Myers for, for plugging us in. Met him uh, while we were in Georgia. I went to the state north and playing basketball. He hit me, he got me along the way. Great guy, great family. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for helping me really build my brand and putting a step on it. It was a great experience. Um, thank you. And I want to thank you, brother, for just the opportunity. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. I thank y'all for just giving me the opportunity. So. Thank you. Thank God for bringing us together. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Looking out the window. Like to bring your property values down. Why do my people? We need to keep everything in our neighborhood, everything black. Blinded by the nations. Black owned, black money. Fool. Ain't nobody from outside bringing down the property value. Amazing photo shoot for IE Music and um, and just IE the Corporation. Had an amazing photo shoot with, uh, with Nick. Uh, great, great photo photographer from, um, he's actually from Mascot. It was amazing. Um, <coughs> as you can see, the view is beautiful. If you, I've never been up here. I've never been to LA at this age. Um, I went, came as a kid when I was like seven years old uh, for a wedding. But that was about it. Um, but it's beautiful. There's nothing but motivation out here. Smell the air. Tastes good, don't it? You know? It tastes different out here. No, I was just saying, you know. Uh, but yeah. Right around this corner is going to be the Hollywood song. And uh, I feel like I'm right at home. Like, about goddamn time. You understand me?